Hey, how are you guys doing today, man? Listen, this begins a brand new series. I've been thinking about this probably for over a year. And um, I had a uh, kind of an episode with a friend where um, they were kind of getting slimed and some things were being spoken against them, which there's a lot of uh, that right now in the body of Christ. People are stabbing each other and stuff. And it's got to stop. But what happened after I was on the phone for about an hour, I realized the next morning, the final quest, the book that changed my life, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to hold it up and show you what it looks like. This is my friend Rick Joyner, who is now semi-retired from Morning Star Ministries. I think he did it for 35 years. And he's a giant man of God to me. And uh, this book... Uh, the final quest changed my life. When I started reading it, I couldn't stop reading it. And so what I felt to do, well, first of all, let me read what's in it. I know it makes sense. The final quest, the book liner, this book is not for the faint of heart. And that would be you and me. We're not faint of heart. We're going to the end. We're marathon runners. It is a, a sobering call to those who take a courageous stand for truth and righteousness. And again, that would be me and all my friends and you guys following this stuff on the stream. And um, they take a stand, a courageous stand for truth and righteousness, challenging the great darkness of our times and pushing it back. I mean, this is not just a little, you know, liner note in the book. This is what we're up against. I believe that... Uh, my son-in-law, Jim Stern, my daughter's husband, Jessica, Jessica's husband, said, you know, Ken, I'm concerned that my children, who range from nine to, is Max six or seven now, Terrence? Max, he's seven. Um, that my kids, all hell is going to break loose in America, and it's going to be not a good thing. And I go, wow, Jim, uh, he's 42 or 43 and uh, here's my son at midlife, so to speak, son-in-law, saying, I really, not fear, but I'm super concerned and have some anxiety about the future and what my kids will, you know, their married life and whatever else happens, what's going to happen the next 30 or 40 years. So we're going to take a courageous stand for truth and righteousness challenging the great darkness of our times and pushing it back. It is, it is to call those who will never again retreat before the enemy of the cross. Think about this statement, and I, I'm pretty sure this is Rick penned this. I mean, it sounds like his writing. This is a call to those who will never again retreat before the enemies of the cross, which I, I love. Uh, many of you are veteran believers anyway, we use the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. There's no demon that scares us. We've been doing it too long, and uh, we're going to the wall. I mean, we're on the wall, I guess I should say it that way. But we'll instead take up their crosses and march forth, forth to tear down the strongholds of the enemy. We have been given divinely powerful weapons for that purpose. You know, this is unusual, and I've never done it before. Uh, of course, I've been a maverick my whole life, and... People, Kent, you run in the halls. Why do you do that? Well, because I have freedom in Christ. Kent, you're coloring outside the lines. I heard this my whole life. And uh, why are you doing that? Well, because I'm a free person. <laughs> no, you have to color inside the lines. And I really felt like at this time of our lives that we need to be challenged. This last thing, we have been given divinely powerful weapons for that purpose. Carla and I find that I'm going to go, since COVID, last two or three years, a lot of people either cooled off or they're just sitting at home. I, I don't really care if they go to church or not, if they'll have a fellowship, a small Bible study. But they kind of gave up the ghost on, you know, the fight, fighting the good fight of faith. And I'm talking, it's in the millions, hundreds of thousands or millions. So we have been given divinely powerful weapons for that purpose. This is a prophecy of the great army that is now being mobilized to use those divinely powerful weapons. Now I'm gonna go slow. 
I'm gonna hold it up again. Can they see that, Taryn? It's available. I have a friend that just got it. I, I mean, I've, this book was written in 96 or 97. And this is what I told Carla. The final quest, Rick Joyner is J-O-Y-N-E-R. I said, hon, you know, did anybody call Rick Joyner and thank him for putting his visions down in a book at the 25-year anniversary? No, they didn't. At least I don't know that they did. I should have done that. But I'm going to read the chapter titles. And uh, for the time being, this slot during the week, I'm doing the final quest. I'll make sure there's scriptures attached to it. But let me go to chapter one because this is why it came up in my spirit and back in my mind. The final quest, and I'm just going to say it like he says it, he would go to his cabin in the mountains of North Carolina and he would be seeking the Lord and be caught up in a trance vision. Kent, what what what'd you say? I said a trance vision. And do you believe in that? Yes, I do. Rick Joyner bears great fruit for the Lord. And, and I feel like it kind of intensifies what we're going to be looking, looking at now, a trance vision. Most believers have never even heard of that, where he, he kind of goes into a lull physically where he's almost like uh, goes into sleep or it's a trance, and then he is actually seeing a vision. What he did in this book is wrote down, it's five chapters. I'm going to read the titles for you and just talk about it for a second. I'm asking everybody to get this book that's watching this stream, even if you're watching it later. Uh, I think my friend Rick, he found his for $9 on Amazon. So, But I'm telling you, it's time to get serious. I, I feel the Lord is arresting people to stop the average stuff they're doing and start operating at a high level of the Holy Spirit again. I mean, if, if you're going to just cool off in uh, uh, the Scripture and Revelation, uh, I'd rather have you hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, Jesus said, I will spew you out of my mouth. That, that makes me tremble. It gives me chills. <laughs> and the word in the Greek is actually, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. So... This is a little different, and I love the music and I love the worship. I don't know that I'll really be doing that during this series. And if people want to unplug, that's fine with me. But I feel like the Lord said, go back. Well, when this came up in my spirit, go back to the things that were super life-changing for you. Like when you get a book and you can't put it down, and then I reread it. Well, I, I had to go back once I read it. I felt like I wasn't getting every part of it because sometimes you're reading fast and I did take speed reading in, in high school and I can speed read for uh, comprehension, which is kind of weird that you would do that. But I went back and line by line. The other thing that comes to my mind is E.W. Kenyon's book, New Creation Realities. I was probably back in my, I was 22 or 23 I, I could read one or two sentences, maybe three, and have to stop and go, oh my God, the amount of revelation uh, and the preparation for any coming display of the kingdom of darkness over America, over nations, uh, Jesus rules and reigns forever. He is the king of glory. He's the king of king and Lord of lords. But I tell you, th this is going to be a great uh, a great time just to sit before the Lord and go, okay, I, I got to get some things going here and get some things right. So part one, and he doesn't call them chapters, but he calls them parts because this was the series of trance visions that he actually had. The first one, the hordes of hell are marching. I was super interested in this because I went, okay, what, what does that mean? And he said, well, the, the problem with the, uh, especially the American church, are lukewarm believers, is he saw them with demons on their shoulder or behind them. And they were, these believers were like cursing other believers or what he called sliming them. And I feel like that's what kind of happened to me uh, a number of days ago. Uh, got through it, no problem. But it was kind of like a perception of, uh, of what I was doing and stuff in that you know, it ended up having, you know, a lot of ego or anyway, we got down to this prophetic word and I saw what it actually meant. But 
believers should not be sliming other people. In other words, it was a demonic force and flow that people were yielding to. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. I, I had never even uh, you know, heard of that before. I mean, I, I knew it conceptually, but, uh, and then e each one, um, I mean, the book, uh, I think it's, uh, let me check the, the pages here. Um, yeah, it's 196 pages before the epilogue, which, you know, he kind of puts everything together. But the second part was the holy mountain, that we are actually climbing the holy mountain. It was powerful because Rick in the Transvision, and he, he wrote down exactly what he saw. He saw Baptist people on the holy mountain. He saw Methodist people on the holy mountain. He saw Assembly of God people, Lutheran people. And, and again, as people went higher, there were different levels of the holy mountain, you know, going for the glory of God, that the people above started thinking they were better than the people below because they'd gone higher on the mountain. Well, <laughs> that is just pride straight up. I mean, why, you know, you want to call other believers. There, there's no lowly believers. You want to call the, the level below to the next level up and come with us. Let's, let's go to the top of the holy mountain. And uh, it just says that we have culturized, um, well, I got to tell you this story. Uh, John Smith, what, what an average name, but a wonderful man, came to Grace World Outreach Center back in the 80s. I had built a TV department with my friend, Frank Muriel. I was the primary worship leader, but they asked me to build the TV department because I had done a lot of TV work. And uh, I ended up running a switcher and all that. And John came from South Africa, John Smith, to get training for a couple weeks. It was a big deal. And uh, man, he loved it. He took notes. I mean, uh, he was probably 45, 48 years old at that point in time. And he was getting ready to leave. I was gonna take him to the airport. He was gonna head back to New York and then down to South Africa. And uh, I said, John, uh, I keep a personal survey. He goes, oh, what do you mean? I said, well, I ask everybody that I get to know from another nation what I want you to do is name the greatest strength of America and the greatest weakness of America before you get on the plane. I want you to, you know, we had about an hour before and he goes, you really want me to do that? I said, oh yeah, this is your first trip here. You'll probably be back. But amazingly, he said, you American people, you just believe you can do anything and you do. <laughs> I said, that's right. We're the land of the free, the home of the brave. And he says, no, and, and then you have money. It's not as if, you know, if, if you're in England, he said, and, or South Africa, you know, a pub or whatever, and you ask somebody, you go to 100 people and say, I have an idea for a new business or a new concept, you're going to get 99 no's before you get a yes. That, that's not true in America. I went, oh, my God, bro, that's really... Unbelievable, he said, so you know, keep up the good work. And again, you guys just believe you can do anything and you do. And he says, the greatest weakness, get ready. He said, sports is your king and sex is your queen. Even though you say you don't have a king and queen in America. Well, we're climbing the holy mountain. Each level, you have to deal with different things that are in your heart, <laughs> back to the book which I, I'm really excited about because I've kind of been waiting to do this. I mean, on average, I wouldn't take a book. I'm going to read, read through it like dramatically, slowly, and then we'll have scriptures with it. But, but just to have a reckoning, a reckoning about where we're really at right now and where the Lord is asking us to go with these divinely powerful weapons. And the return of the eagles Amazingly, this book came out in 1996 and 97. So I'm watching The Lord of the Rings with whoever it was, our family. And here come the giant eagles. That is in Rick Joyner's book before it was ever in a movie. <laughs> and I went, oh my God, um, further, which is, you know, kind of out there up on the rim. Uh, I, I have, I'm a seer and I've had visions and stuff. And most of them are repeatable. Some of them are so fantastic, it's hard to even do it. But I was caught up, I was climbing a mountain. I was on a low plain area and I, the Lord said, come up higher, and I did. And there are pathways and soon I got to boulders. It was hard to get up to the very top. But when I did, and it seemed like it took me an hour or two, I was really tired. 
And I looked off in the west, and the sun was kind of starting to set. And I saw a, sp- a set, and I saw a speck on the horizon. And then it got bigger and bigger. I realized it was a giant eagle flying in. And it was, it was a l- little scary, I mean, a little intimidating. And the eagle landed like about 20 feet from me on a large boulder. And I went, oh my God, who are you? And the Lord says, you don't recognize me? (laughs) He said, I want you to climb on my back. I'm going to take you up to 10, 15, 20,000 so you can see what I can see. It's a vision, you know, and people... I, I just, I was blown away. I've never forgot it. So he said, come fly with me on my back. And the reason I share that is because the return of the eagles, the eagle is the bird of victory and the bird of power. And just think, um, Benjamin Franklin wanted to have the Eastern Turkey as our our bird of America. <laughs> thank, thank God they said no to that. But we are the the the, the country of eagles where I will lift you up on eagles' wings, they that wait upon the Lord. The, the fourth uh, part is the white throne, and it's the power of his presence revealed. And then part five is the overcomers. So I'm going to ask you, get a copy of it. I'm going to read it out loud. I'm going to put scriptures with it. I'm pretty excited because uh, I've had the concept to do it, but... Um, I felt like I don't want to be cheese ball or kind of weird and stuff, but I know this book and there's others uh, that may come actually changed my life. And so Rick wrote, he signed my copy back in the day. We we're at a Morningstar conference when it, when it came out. And he said, Zechariah 8, 9, Kent. I've got a complete Jewish Bible. I want to show you this because it is huge. <laughs> I got onto the complete Jewish Bible years ago from my 26 translation Bible. And this is large print, so these eyes can actually read it without putting on glasses. But this guy is David Stern. Uh, He was a uh, Orthodox Jewish man. And uh, he did a book on surfing. He's a California guy. And then he met Messiah. And so it took him a number, I think it was eight or 10 years, to complete the full Jewish Bible. He now lives in Israel, Aliyah, meaning the return of Jewish people to Israel. And I think he's 80-something. But I love this man because it it puts a messianic tone on the scripture. Uh, But it also, his New Testament puts it in light of Jesus being Jewish, which he is. But he, he gave me this scripture And today, I ask you to take courage. Adonai Savat, God of heaven and earth, says, take courage. Just Let's just stop for a minute. I'm going to take courage. Terry, my daughter-in-law, is behind my camera here. Take courage. Uh, All the people you know, it's time to take courage and take a deep breath of the pure oxygen of heaven and say, we're going to the next level in Jesus' name. And we all may be at different levels, but that second chapter, well, I believe when you read it, and I read it out loud, it's, it's going to arrest us, say, okay, I got room to grow in that area. But take courage, you who are hearing only now, in these days, the words spoken by the prophets. Now, I'm amazed that Amanda Grace is functioning and is on, you know, a, a national figure. She's a prophetess of the Lord. You have Julie Green. You have many other people, Robin Bullock, that are prophesying. We're, we're not like caught up in complete darkness and in between last book of the Bible and the first book of the New, New Testament or last book of the Old Testament. But it's time for us to hear the words of the prophets when the foundation was being laid for the rebuilding of the temple, which is the house of Adonai Savat in Jerusalem, Jerusalem. So I believe there's some foundation stones the Lord's going to give us. And uh, I'm excited because, uh, I mean, I can do worship, you know, day in and day out. out and people say, can you lead worship right out of sleep? I said, absolutely, man. Just come at three and let's try it. <laughs> but I believe that this is a time... As we're ending, uh, this is the middle of October 2022, 
or two and a half years after COVID, which I believe was an attempt to actually kill people on the planet of Wuhan, releasing a virus which they knew was deadly for people that have diabetes and heart problems. How demonic was that? And you'll never convince me otherwise. There's a plan. Uh, the Georgia um, found the Georgia stones fell during a lightning storm, and they put on there, "Hey, 500 million people is all the Earth should have, so we got to get rid of some people." I go, "You guys are out of your mind." And the Lord's coming back again, and He'll deal with all of it in justice. But uh, the final thing, uh, for prior to this time, which was the word spoken by the prophets. There were wages neither for people nor for animals. Moreover, it was unsafe for anyone to go out or come in because of the enemy. For I set all peoples against each other. But from now on, I will not treat the remnant of this people as I did before. I believe that we are down to a remnant in the millions or not. Um, I will not. For now, we're going to sow in peace. Yes, the vine will give its fruit. I believe it's going to be an abundant provision, a greater provision. The ground will produce its yield and the sky will give its due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all things. Now that's speaking you know, about Jewish people straight up. But in the New Testament, we have a fulfillment. Hear it again. Now they will sow in peace, which I've never stopped doing. Shalom, shalom on the streets of Jerusalem. That's how they greet each, uh, each other, and that's how they leave each other. Shalom, peace, peace. Shalom, shalom. The vine will give its fruit, which is GA, greater abundance. The ground will produce its yield. The sky will give its due. And I believe these are all emblematic of things in the spirit as well. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. It's time for the fulfillment of all the promises of God. So, Father, we pray right now. We ask you for divine light of heaven and revelation. I'm asking you to break out in our nation, America. It's never too late with you, but I believe that we're on the verge of a great awakening where people without church, without a call to an altar, will get saved as they leave their tavern at 1 a.m. in the morning, as you know they just beat their wife. They're, they're, people are going to turn to you. We're going to see a great awakening, revival. The songs will say, God is in the land. Not just revival, but the Lord himself is in the land. And uh, it, this is a good day, Father. We pray right now. And we surrender our hearts, our destiny, everything, our lives on the altar of prayer and worship. Many people right now seeing this video, Lord, they have something to do for you. You told them and they haven't done it yet. So I ask you for that courage and that strength to start on the journey of the next level, climbing your holy mountain. I pray and I bless all my friends now, Father. Never goodbye to be continued in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. I'll see you.